he's done it for heroic. What you just watched was Heroic's Casper Kadian Muller winning ESL Pro League with a 1v4 2 HP clutch that instantly found its place among the canon of Counter-Strike's greatest ever plays. The P250, the knife, the op, the wall bang, the systematic elimination of opponents one by one after a seven hour marathon in a best of five grand final. It was an incredible moment. But the man behind it didn't always stand atop the CS mountain. Just over a year ago, Cadian's situation was a far cry from what it is now. The sacrifices being made to family and friends, to try and be the best you can in, in, in a video game, and then at the end of the day, you're not allowed to play this video game. I don't know. I don't think I've ever been this mistreated in my entire life. In early 2020, a series of unfortunate events put his Counter-Strike aspirations in serious jeopardy. When he made that video at Flashpoint in California and um, his work had pulled out, it was, it didn't seem like we'd be talking to Katie for much longer, genuinely. And not only did he come up on a new team and reach a new height, but he's basically done it twice. But before we dive into that, let's rewind a little and take a look beyond the clip. Cadian has been playing CSGO competitively since 2013. And hearing that, you might imagine his resume to be littered with tournament victories, epic moments, and successes. But in truth, his trophy case until recently was, well, a little empty. Seven years of playing under different organizations with only a few notable tournament victories to his name. Cadian was simply that player. He was well-liked for his warm, friendly, articulate nature, but for one reason or another, just couldn't seem to crack the elite top shelf of competitive Counter-Strike. And during a tough 2019 that saw him benched by North for almost half a year, doubts crept into his mind about what he could accomplish in CSGO. Maybe like post-North, there was a time for me where I started thinking, okay, Maybe top 10 will do for me. Maybe that's like the greatest thing I can do and I would be super proud of achieving that. Relief from the purgatory of the bench came in the form of heroic, after strong performances as a stand-in earned him a permanent place on their roster. And at least initially, promising results did begin to emerge. Second at DreamHack Open Rotterdam, winning DreamHack Open Atlanta and coming third, fourth at Epicenter, losing out to powerhouse Vitality and Mouse Sports teams. And then, in March of 2020, everything changed. The reigning League of Legends World Champions Fun Plus Phoenix announced their intention to enter CSGO, and their team would be the current heroic roster. Under FPX, Cadian and co were set to debut at Flashpoint Season 1, a new league that boasted a $1 million prize pool. With a promising roster, a heavy hitter organization from overseas entering the eSport, and all of it happening in a new league, it was a time of hope and excitement for Stown, Esetag, Snappy, Borup, and Cadian. The roster traveled from Europe to LA, played their first series in a losing effort to Cloud9, and never played another game for Fun Plus Phoenix again. That was monstrous. That was just like a sit down and shut up moment from Cloud9 to FPX. In the days following their first Flashpoint game, Esetag officially signed for Astralis, and he was apparently set to join the Danish org in July. But after accusations of acting in bad faith from Heroic CEO Eric Askrid and responses from Astralis CEO Nikolai Nyholm, the deal between Heroic and FPX that was seemingly set in stone completely collapsed. On the day of a game against the aptly named Orglis, Cadian, as he explained on the HLTV Confirmed podcast, received a call from Askrid and was told FPX would be forfeiting the game. I still remember just sitting up to play the second game of Flashpoint, uh, sitting there warming up with our gear, and then uh, we get a call from uh, our owner of the organization, Eric, and he said, like, yeah, stop playing, like, there's no need, you guys are not going to play. 
the transfer of the roster from Heroic to Fun Plus Phoenix was now off. In a single phone call, Flashpoint, FPX, and everything that had happened in the last several weeks turned from a potential dream for KD and his teammates into a nightmare. That was one of the darkest moments of my career. Um, I felt like we were finally on an upward trajectory. We were close to signing with a big organization, having a partner team in one of the biggest leagues, and things were looking very bright. And we, I guess you can say, got robbed of that chance. We also said no to playing in Pro League because we thought we were going to play Flashpoint. So we were left with the things we had. And we didn't get the things we were promised, you know? So we were in such a bad situation. The players were now left on a foreign continent, in the middle of a global pandemic, and without an event to play in. In the following weeks, the roster returned to Heroic, but with significant changes. In April, on Cadian's own recommendation, Tessis and Nico were brought into the roster, alongside a new coach with over a decade of CS experience in Hunden. And after just a few months of fairly mixed results at smaller events, Heroic put the Counter-Strike world on notice. Plays, but it looks like it's all too little, too late. The spray's coming in. Tessus has done enough. It's only Amanek and Heroic are gonna find the 16. They're off to the grand finals. ESL One Cologne has got its first grand finalist, Tessus, for grand final point for the trophy. This is the first Cologne for Borup, Cadian, Tessus. And they're the last team standing. Unbelievable. Absolutely incomprehensible. Certainly for the French. Wow, Cadian can't quite believe it. The victory in the European division of ESL1 Cologne in 2020 was the biggest achievement in Cadian's seven years of dedication to competitive Counter-Strike but the celebrations were marred by the revelation that heroic coach Hunden had used the now infamous CSGO spectator bug earlier in the year. He was banned for a year by the Esports Integrity Commission and suspended by heroic. But if any doubt regarding coaching exploits or the volatile nature of online CS lingered with the fans, a DreamHack Open fall win without Hunden over the likes of Astralis and Vitality put those to rest. With only 14 HP, 1v3, and get ready for a Cadian pop-off, because he's done it. He closes and leads his team to yet another win. Wow, heroic, stunning fashion, all the way back through the lower bracket. You cannot question their resilience. You cannot question their skill or leadership. Then in February of 2021, heroic once again, evolved. Nico and Borup were out, with Refresh and Shush from Mad Lions taking their place. And with Cadian guiding them, the new look roster were essentially thrown straight into the shark tank of ESL Pro League. But it would prove to be heroic who were the apex predators of the EPL. They won seven straight series en route to the grand finals, beating the likes of Furia, Complexity, and yes, even Fun Plus Phoenix. Opposite them in the grand finals were a rejuvenated, dangerous gambit. Like a ghost from years past when the Russian org were major champions, this CIS roster represented a deadly combination of skill, coordination, and tactical prowess. The series was an absolute marathon, a seven hour best of five classic with heroic and gambit trading blows like two heavyweights, each one refusing to fall. Oh, but I still hasn't moved. It might even catch him. Oh, we heard him drop off. It's down. Great reactions and another on the spray. Oh my God, he gets three. He's made a round out of this. They lost two players early, but Stown on his solo B hold has made it competitive. And they're working their way through construction. Now there is an incendiary. They'll throw that towards Shiro's position. That's great. It's gonna spread. He's got to move. And he is out into the open. Shush collects. This is amazing from Heroic. And Exile can't handle it either. They do successfully retake the B site and two on the CT side from Heroic. Certainly in this one, five HP, go on. Sun, oh, okay. oh, oh my God, no way. Refresh, warming up the dig. Keeping us on notice. Stop writing me out of this bloody round. They have to plan. And not anymore, because Tessus has gone on the floor. It's only Cadian. What can you do? 10 seconds, he needs a quick no scope and a plant. He opts for the plant instead. Hello? Pushing. 
No scope. Time. No time. No time. No time. We go again. I can't quite believe it. These two teams cannot be separated. Gambit Heroic heading into overtime four. Gambit, they started so strong, but Heroic over the course of an absurd amount of rounds are about to pull it across the line. Nearly 60 rounds of play, but there's Heroic seizing train. Yeah, but that bomb needs to get across and it's on stand with 25 HP. If Intus just hits one bullet, but Refresh is relieved to all that pressure. Tagged. The tag is the only one that could have taken They're the so shot. Low. They are low. The scout could do it all, but the bomb will be planted in time. Okay, Wallbang could have finished the job. Doesn't choose to do so. Oh. Now he does, bit late. But Tessus is gone. Stan's still on the box as well. He was the one that planted. They'll know he's close. Daphne! Back turned. Daphne's doing it all. He might even find the fourth. He's hunting now. Refresh has got two to find. And a really tough spot. But in the oh! end, oh, the flying no scope to save Gambit. Oh, Refresh had him dead to rights as well. He'd have oh. finished that spray before his feet touched the ground. And after the dust had settled, after the overtimes, the back and forth maps, the calculated strategies, and the adrenaline fueled clutches, all anyone could talk about was one thing. Cadian's beautiful, inconceivable play in the very final round that won Heroic the Pro League title. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh my god, he's knifed him, and he's gotten away with the orb. I'm starting to get nervous. There's no way, there's no way. Cadian, you can't win Pro League like this. You can't win Pro League like this. No way. Axile's left, 40 seconds and the bomb's on A. Take your time, son. You're about to make the play of your career. Saw him. Gets the info. He just has to hit this shot and he's done it for Heroic. The leader. Calling well above his years, clearing corners. Oh, no! You're an animal! Heroic have done it, and I just can't believe it. 40% of their team only together since February. To be honest, I felt like when Nathani peeked me um, in front of like Sandwich and I killed him with like a fast shot, I feel like I might want to win this. Like, uh, there's a chance. And then I peek, I know the guy's behind the uh, firebox, triple, call it what you want. I check him. My sixth sense is just like, yeah, let's, let's try and hit him again. And th that double wall bang obviously initiated like some spark, some energy, some belief in the round. But I still had to overcome Exile, who was alongside me in this final the MVP candidate for the tournament. I'm left with two HP, no time left. I have to pick up the bump. Um, but the thing is, when you're in a situation like this where you kill three of his teammates, if you want it or not, he's going to be a little bit scared, right? He doesn't want to lose that round. He knows how... I wouldn't say like embarrassing, but he knows what moment is like in front of him, right? What everyone will talk about after the final, a lot of thoughts. And I make this uh, crazy info jump on stairs. I see his hit and that's when the game of chicken comes. I'm just creeping, creeping, creeping. And I know that at some point he's either going to swing on me or jump up. And I find the perfect timing and yeah, everything just clicked. This play isn't even a month old, but already it's being talked about as a moment in time among Counter-Strike's pantheon of immortal plays. And so it should be. Again, playing off of what Mohan has said here, a set of very special circumstances is what allowed for that play to be so incredibly special in and of itself. And that's why we, you know, or I myself consider that S tier. Um, it's, it's one of those moments that you'll always remember from a man who, not so long ago, was questioning his own future in Counter-Strike to a year full of unforgettable victories and a play that will go down in history as one of the best we've ever seen, it has been a remarkable 12 months for Casper Kadian Mula. And after eight years, it might just be the beginning. I kind of understood that the sky is the limit for us, and I guess that's something that you should never forget as a competitor. But it's like you said, hard when you played for so long. Um, in the in, in the end, like I think right now, it sounds silly to say because, like you said, I played professionally for seven years. But in a way, it feels like my career has just started, you know. And uh, I, I guess that's just a positive sign of saying that I've gained a lot of experience, but the future is still ahead of me.